Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. And today we're going to do One Piece chapter 1072 review. Let's get into it. The title of this chapter, The Weight of Memory. Starting off with the cover page, we see the mass production of deadly weapons by the Mads group. And we just see Caesar, Queen, and Judge just standing in a circle creating some kind of deadly weapon. And getting deeper into the chapter, it's most likely a clone, but we'll get into that in a second. Now getting into the chapter, we get an opening from Vegapunk. Even if the world does not accept how she came to be, the girl is unmistakably human. It was a success. I bear witness to this achievement and I maintain that is a huge step towards world peace. So Vegapunk has a completely different idea than Oda gives us in the cover page. So in the cover page, they are producing deadly weapons. However, Vegapunk believes that this will help towards world peace. So right off the bat, Oda is showing us the dichotomy of science where there are some good parts to science, but science can also be used for the negative aspects, right? Such as mass destruction and mass death. And Vegapunk clearly has more of an optimistic perspective on this where he thinks that this cloning technology could potentially save the world. And after this, we get back to the game of tag being played by Bonnie and Vegapunk. Bonnie ends up tricking Vegapunk into thinking that she was hurt and Vegapunk actually comes over and Bonnie ends up using this cool ability that Oda shows us called Distorted Future. And Distorted Future is an interesting ability. It seems like Bonnie can traverse different timelines of her own future and she can actually end up taking different paths to aging. And so what we've seen with aging in One Piece so far is that there's already two ways that someone can age. A good way and a bad way as Oda has showed us in his different aging patterns of the Straw Hat crew. And all Bonnie is showing us is that there is even more futures than what Oda just showed us. And in this case, Bonnie aged herself up into some future where she's absolutely jacked. And this allows her to finally catch up to Vegapunk and she uses Timely Thrust which ends up de-aging Vegapunk down into a little kid. And for the moment we've all been waiting for, Bonnie finally confronts Vegapunk on why he killed her dad. And Vegapunk enlightens us Kuma chose this fate for himself. And Kuma apparently told Vegapunk to make a promise to never tell Bonnie about this. Bonnie gets fed up with Vegapunk and starts looking around and ends up finding Kuma's memory bubble. We then quickly shift over to a flashback between Vegapunk and Kuma. This is where Vegapunk discusses the weight of a soul and he says that a scientist out in the West Blue once postulated that a person loses 21 grams of mass upon death and that could be considered the weight of their soul. What turns out to be cool about this is that this is actually a real life study and the study was published by Duncan McDougall. He attempted to measure the mass of the soul departing the body and this is basically taking the weight before someone dies and after they die and seeing that difference. And the results of this study is that for one of his patients 21.3 grams of weight was unaccounted for and this has been put in hyperbole as the weight of someone's soul. So it's actually pretty cool that Oda is referencing some real science here. And shifting back Vegapunk continues to explain Kuma's abilities. He says that Kuma can take something intangible like pain and give it a physical form. And not only this, Kuma can transfer this to others. Vegapunk summarizes his ability as a total wireless transmission of nerve signals. And he was wondering if this can be applied to other nerve signals like imagination and memories. So my little theory out of this is that Vegapunk was able to create punk records where the other Vegapunks were able to download his memories based off of Kuma's ability. I also want to quickly talk about the math that Vegapunk was writing on the board. And what instantly stood out for me was the formula for magnetic flux. Flux equals BS cosine theta, where B is the magnetic field and S is the vector surface area. And the next piece that stood out to me was the DPDT piece. And in physics, DPDT traditionally means some kind of force and my initial guess was for momentum where it's the, the change in momentum over time and as I look deeper into it you can kind of see the rest of the formula to the left of the image it looks more like some kind of ideal gas law formula due to the PI and P2 these traditionally mean something to do with partial pressures and I even found a similar formula on the physical energy of a mixture of ideal gases and the fact that Vegapunk is writing some kind of formula dealing with ideal gas lock totally makes sense. It's because Kuma is using his ability to turn something intangible like pain again into a physical form. So the physical form Kuma's taking for these things is a gas basically, right? A bubble of gas. This bubble can store whatever data is put in there such as pain, imagination, memories, and potentially even dreams. So I wonder if someone was in a dream state, could Kuma extract that dream in particular? Could Kuma even extract someone's devil fruit? Since devil fruits are spawned from dreams, maybe Kuma is able to extract devil fruits from a person by extracting their dreams. After we learn about Kuma's powers, we go back to the lab and Vegapunk is begging Bonnie not to touch Kuma's memories. And obviously this is showing that Bonnie will probably touch Kuma's memories and remember everything that happened to him. 
And honestly, I'm super hyped about this Kuma flashback and also it'll be a simultaneous Bonnie flashback. And as all of this is going on, Kuma is still climbing the red line and ends up getting tacked by the Marines and the Marines potentially captured him at this point. Transitioning back with the rest of the crew, Nami is now freaking out that CP0 and Rob Lucci have gotten into the lab stratum. Not only that, Shaka points out that this battle is more one-sided than we thought as the Seraphim have also come with Rob Lucci. So it wasn't just CP0 against Zoro and Brook, it was also the Seraphim. This leads to Lilith and Edison heading out to try to control the Seraphim. Nami also decides to send out Sanji and Frankie to help Brook and Zoro. Right as they head out, we see Kaku attacking Zoro and he is in his awakened form. And right as Zoro is distracted, Rob Lucci uses this moment to send in the Seraphim and destroy the lab. All of a sudden we see Kaku fall over and Stussy right above him and she just has a menacing grin on her face and just says, I just put him to sleep. And she even threatens Rob Lucci that he has to go to sleep as well. And so Stussy is revealed to be the clone of Mrs. Buckingham. And instantly people made connections to Mrs. Buckingham and Miss Baki. And Mrs. Bakin's translation is actual Buckin in English. And so it is clear that these two characters are definitely related and Stussy could definitely be the clone of Miss Bakin. Miss Buckingham is also revealed to be a former crew member of the Rocks Pirates. And all this cloning made the community go absolutely wild and look deeper into the Rocks Pirates and I ended up looking deeper as well. And first I want to go back to that scene where Higurashi is offering Orochi a devil fruit and she shows off her clone clone ability turning into Shiki and and some woman and people believe that this woman was Stussy or at least Miss Buckingham and so looking deeper into the rocks pirates we have Whitebeard and so imagine if someone cloned Whitebeard imagine Edward Weevil who Miss Bakken claims is Whitebeard's son and this would make a lot more sense since Weevil is not directly Whitebeard's son she's just a clone of him and potentially a failed clone of him I've also been hearing some crazy theories like potentially Kid being Shanks' clone, Dragon being Rox's clone, and a lot of other theories. Now Clone Piece is going absolutely wild and everyone is having tons and tons of crazy theories, but I actually want to get back to Stussy's Devil Fruit ability. And it seems like Stussy has some kind of ability like a vampire. And initially I was thinking maybe she's some kind of mythical Logia where she's some kind of vampire, but I think this is where it relates back to the cover story. And in the cover story, we see the three scientists holding three different things. So Caesar is holding a devil fruit, Queen is holding two potions, and Judge is holding something I'm guessing to do with his cloning technology. And so my best guess on what happened to Stussy is that she is a clone from Judge who has a devil fruit ability from Caesar and got her venomous slash poisonous ability from Queen the Plague. And if this is true, this is absolutely sick where Oda is tying in the cover page to the rest of the chapter. And that's basically all I've got for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below let me know what you think of clone piece and i'm absolutely hyped for the next chapter i can't wait to find out who else is a clone in this story i'm so hyped about it deuces